My name's Brandon and this is Video Game History, a show where I take a look back at a certain franchise of video games and retrospectively review them. This week we have Cartoon Network's second entry on the PlayStation 2 and GameCube consoles. Samurai Jack The Shadow of Aku is also the second and final Samurai Jack game to be released, following in the wake of Samurai Jack The Amulet of Time on the Game Boy Advance. Amulet of Time wasn't the worst game I've played in this series, but it never really captured the essence of Samurai Jack and it left me wanting a much better game based on the franchise. The Shadow of Aku was developed by Adrenium Games, and in a first for Cartoon Network, it was published by SEGA. Just having SEGA in charge of the publishing gives me much more confidence than I've had in the majority of other games based on Cartoon Network licenses so far. Adrenium Games were a sub-studio of Amaze Entertainment, and only released three games under the Adrenium Games banner, before becoming Gryptonite Games. Gryptonite Games have been involved in the development of some pretty high-profile games like LEGO Star Wars, Spider-Man Web of Shadows and Shattered Dimensions, and Assassin's Creed Bloodlines. The Shadow of Aku sits on a 59 Metacritic score and has a wild range of scores. The highest score it received was an 8 from the official PlayStation magazine, while also receiving 6s from G4 and Game Informer. However, IGN and GameSpot gave the game a 5.2 and one outlet gave it a 2.5. Scores vary wildly here, so I'm really not sure what to expect before jumping in. Samurai Jack The Shadow of Aku plays much like the game that came before it, in that it's a hack and slash game. That's to be expected though, considering there aren't many other genres that you could actually make a Samurai Jack game with. However, it differs in that it focuses on giving you levels in a more linear manner, rather than the open nature of the Amulet of Time. You're given the three stock standard difficulty options here, and for the review I chose to play on normal. After playing for just 5 minutes, I already knew I was going to enjoy this far more than the last game. Jack moves so much more fluidly here, which was a relief after the clunky stiffness of the Amulet of Time that basically went against everything that Samurai Jack is. You have so many different combos at your disposal here. When just starting off, you have your light and heavy sword strikes, which you can string together. However, as you progress through the game, you'll find scrolls with brand new high-powered combos on them. I'm a bit of a button masher when it comes to hack and slash games, but it's nice to have this depth in Jack's moveset, and they're worth pulling off as they do do serious damage. In addition to these sword combos, you also pick up shuriken that you can throw from a distance, and you have a bow and arrow too. These combined with the combos make Jack's offense so much more fleshed out, and he really feels like he's skilled in combat. The Shadow of Aku also introduces a Zen meter and Zen mode, which is kind of like bullet time in that it slows down time and makes your attack stronger. Occasionally when you string multiple combos together on multiple enemies, you'll automatically enter Zen mode, resulting in some pretty cool looking moments. Additionally, the further you get into the game will see you obtaining special elemental swords like you did in the last game, and these can be equipped to do more damage, however every strike drains your Zen meter. While you're carving your way through levels, you'll also be freeing people who have been imprisoned by Aku, and there also are plenty of relics for you to find. Relics act as a sort of currency in this game, as when you complete a level and return to the hub world, you have the option to exchange the relics you've collected in order to upgrade your health, sword strength, and Zen meter. I was able to fully upgrade both my health and sword strength, but I didn't come close to fully upgrading my zen, which is nice to see that your choices in what you're upgrading actually matter, rather than having you guaranteed to obtain every single upgrade by the end. And while equipping items and the stats in the Amulet of Time felt useless, here when you upgrade your strength, it's incredibly obvious that you're doing more damage. One thing I was really surprised with was how much variety there was in both the enemies and the level settings. There are so many different enemies that get introduced all the way up until the final levels, and that helps keep things fresh. The combat is generally pretty repetitive and straightforward, so throwing in new enemies that make you change up your thinking and change the pace keeps things from getting dull. On the same note, the game's unique levels keep things from getting dull too. There are only 4 different worlds here with 24 levels in total, but each level in the worlds actually feel unique. Just because they're in the same worlds doesn't mean you're going to be seeing the exact same scenery, as in most cases the levels are actually wildly different. The game's story isn't really focused on too heavily, but it's a nice supplemental story to what takes place in the show. The developers actually worked personally with Gendy Tartakovsky for the story, so that they created something that would stay true to the essence of the show.
While I have a lot of praise for Samurai Jack The Shadow of Aku, it's not without its flaws. Its biggest problem is that it's just too easy. I almost never died from combat in this game, and in general I just steamrolled through everything. I feel like this issue would probably be solved by playing on hard, but I always play games on normal the first time and there's no way I could know how easy the game is until I was already a good chunk into my playthrough, so restarting wasn't an option. Similarly, the boss battles aren't very good. They're easy, and they're pretty dull. When you're facing the large bosses, it usually boils down to waiting for the attack pattern to play out and then attacking him at the incredibly obvious time when they're stunned. For the smaller bosses like the Scotsman or Evil Jack, it basically becomes a run-of-the-mill enemy fight with absolutely no challenge. They're never able to get the boss battles right, which is a real bummer. I also experienced some problems with the game's lock-on system. This problem stemmed from the fact that you get automatically locked onto enemies and I couldn't find a way to switch who I was locked onto. This created annoying moments where I couldn't attack who I wanted and it made it tricky to try and smash boxes to find health in boss battles. I would have liked to see no lock-on system at all, as I think the combat is strong enough to stand on its own without this. Finally, the biggest challenge in this game was the platforming. I mentioned earlier that I almost never died from combat, but there were plenty of deaths from me failing at the platforming. The problem with the platforming here is that you never feel confident in Jack's ability to make the jumps. The majority of the jumps are the ones where you barely make the edge, which means there's no room for error most of the time and results in a lot of annoying deaths. This became annoying pretty quickly and was a huge sore spot for me. Samurai Jack The Shadow of Aku is a good game, something I have rarely said on Cartoon Network video game history so far. It's a fun hack and slash game that has a surprising amount of depth to the combat and does a fantastic job of making you feel how Samurai Jack is in the show. I read some of the negative reviews and I don't really understand their point of views. Sure, this game has flaws, I've pointed out a number of them, but none of them are so serious to give it a low score. Samurai Jack The Shadow of Aku was thoroughly enjoyable and takes the place as my favourite Cartoon Network game so far in this series. 